Hello, everyone. Yes. Let Julian talk. Hello. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our awesome the window manager that I guess a lot of you guys already know. Uh, ended up with Loa and not Guide. So um, uh, as everyone knows, uh, we picked Loa a long time ago. So a lot of the things I'm going to talk about today are a bit old, but I think it's going to give us a bit of insight of on both languages. Uh, so who here already used Awesome or is using still Awesome? Quite a few people, cool, yeah. I'm not using Awesome anymore as you may have seen, so sorry. Uh, so who I am, well I'm Julian. Uh, I've been doing free software things for a while now. I'm not that old, but I started quite young, so. Uh, I've been a developer for the most of my life now, and uh, nowadays I work on Red Hat, which you all know, I guess, on OpenStack, so I do Python stuff all today. So I'm really not into Guy and Loa anymore for a few years. Uh, so I'm going to tell you how our song started at the beginning. It's quite a fun story to, to hear, I guess. Uh, that's my desktop like 10 years ago. So I was using uh, dual screens and you can see it, but it's uh, FBWM, so the old window manager that has been there for like 20 years or so, uh, which I liked, but it was kind of a pain to configure. I think I never really understand uh, or you're supposed to configure it, but I was, you know, copy-pasting configuration files from other people. And one day that happens, because I switched my desktop from a 32-bit system to AMD64, and, well, every WM somewhere was bugged on that, so uh, I had to switch to another window manager. Uh, I guess, like, many of you guys are use like, every window manager out there, like, you try all the Xbox, Openbox, whatever box, window maker, etc. So I, I mean, it's always like, you know, once a year, oh, I'm going to try this one, maybe it's better, and yeah, it's, it's never ending, but... Uh, at the end, I stumbled upon uh, DWM, which is a very small window manager, uh, essentially tiling, so it organizes your windows for you. And uh, I started uh, to patch it, uh, because it has a very low set of features, and I think it's still true today. Um, and you would like to recompile to do anything, so everything, it's just like 2,000 lines of C code and you have to recompile it if you want to change anything in this game. Uh, that's kind of their philosophy, which I don't really adhere to, but it is like it is. Um, there were a lot of people writing features for it and sending patches to the mailing list, but none of the patches were merged into DWM because, well, policy is not to merge anything, so. <laughs> so people had to like um, always maintain their own patches, which was a pain. So I started to grab all the patches I thought were interesting and build a new window manager, which I call JDWM. Uh, renamed to Awesome for version one. So uh, anyone use version one or maybe version two, which were like a long time ago? A few of you? Yeah. It's, it's, it was a long time ago. It only, I think, existed for like like less than a year so um so i started to have users actually uh because well people were kind of happy not to have um, to maintain their patches anymore so people started to use a bit of uh, awesome because it was like it was like dwm but better with more features and with a configuration file which is very handy when you want to change things not to have to recompile everything and it's more easy to port to maintain it was packaged in debian it was easy to use more easy that uh, DWM. Um, that's what is on DW on page. So that's one of the reasons, like I said, that why I was uh, getting a lot more users uh, than DWM at the time. Uh, because, well, they didn't want to merge anything and to have well, like a configuration file was no option for them. So, uh, but pretty soon people started to ask a lot of features and uh, a lot of the features were either incompatible or like way too complicated to write. Like uh, people say to more like title bars. So you write title bars and then people want to have title bars on windows that are floating and not tied, but only on this desktop and this desktop. So that's like a lot of options. So pretty soon you will start uh, thinking about having your own GSL, which is always a bad idea because it's never, I mean, you start with a small GSL and in the end you end up with a full language. So um, I started to, to take a look at uh, what option I had 
to not write my own GSL. Um, well, I decided that I needed uh, for us some um, language, a full language. Uh, maybe not something very heavy because it's still like small window manager. So in 2008, so it's a very long time ago, uh, I started to, well, take a look at what existed back then and I kind of reduced the list to three languages. Uh, Python because I already use it, but it's not really designed uh, never sold to be embedded. It's possible to do so, there's a few programs doing it, but it's not like, um, it's not on the box like, hey, Python is very cool to be embedded. Uh, Lua is, uh, it's, it was used already by a few programs, games, whatever. Uh, it was quite popular, uh, Guard, but Guard, I mean, it's scary for most user. When I was talking about Guile on IRC back then, there was like, whoa, there's too many parentheses, guy. We, we don't we don't understand why there's so many parentheses everywhere. It's it's crazy. So that's the problem we have we, you have with Lisp language in general, which is a pain. But when you have a lot of different users, uh, that <coughs> try to pay. But it is designed for being on that too. At least at first it was. Uh, even if I was kind of, it was weird though to be used in things like Emacs, for example. But that's that was free that I tried. Um, I tried Python. Uh, so Python 2, Python 3, that's... Uh, hey, Victor. <laughs> so that's, that's the question in 2008, and I think it's still a question today, like, even eight years later, um, a lot of people don't know if they should do Python 2, Python 3. So uh, imagine back at the time, uh, how confused you uh, was. Um, it's not really like designed to be embedded, so the condition is very sparse, and at least was very sparse back then. And um, the C uh, code was a bit obscure to me. Uh, there was a lot of talk about reference counting, which I was not familiar with back then. So it it looks pretty it looked pretty complicated at the time. So I ditched Python pretty quickly. The upside was Python is a good ecosystem. So I, I knew that I was like not going to use that, but well, uh, I tried Guile. Uh, I, I I mean I was scared by Scheme in general. It was like well, too weird for me, I was doing C, uh, Python, it was like too different for me back at the time. But it was designed for being embedded, and uh, the version in 2007 and 8 was Guide 1, okay, which was like less exciting than Guide 2 is, thanks to MD, who took a lot of work in Guide 2 from what I heard, and it's like, nowadays very much exciting what it was. And the documentation was really scarce, not necessarily bad or outdated, but it was like not really helpful for a uh, novice user like me. Like I, I knew nothing about embedding language, so I was like, well, how do you do that? Uh, but on the other end was like super easy. Like I, I remember I read of the whole manual in like a day and a week uh, later, I had a proof of concept of awesome uh, doing things with Lua. Like I was about to add title bars, uh, just with two lines of law in my C program. It was very, very easy, very fast. Uh, as you all know, it's, it's a, a small footprint for memory. Uh, it's, it was like very easy, there's a lot of documentation. It's really designed to be embedded, like I think a bit like that was, but uh, the documentation actually explains you how to embed Lua in a C program with examples, etc. So I think uh, for all of the free languages, a good uh, things to remember is that documentation is like super important if you want adaption uh, to your project, programming language, or whatever. Uh, so that was our version free of Awesome, uh, which was released with uh, support for Lua, uh, for programming language. Uh, we exposed only a few functions uh, back then. We were not able to do a lot of the things you can do today with Awesome 3.5, uh, it was pretty small. Uh, if you compare to what you were able to do, you were able to do compared to like something like DWM uh, with its only 2,000 uh, source line of code, uh, you have like 13 and a bit of Lua, and you could do a lot more things. Uh, it grew, it grew, and it still works today. There's still a lot of users. I have no clue how many users uh, I think we have like 1,000 of people on the mailing list now, uh, so probably 10 times more users, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the C code uh, has been reduced, that's one of the perks of 
I'm bending, uh, I'm bending a language that you can express a lot of the C things actually in Lua or any other language you embed. So you tend to reduce your C code size because, well, it's simpler to write things in Lua. So the more time passes, the more you start to reduce the C code size and push things uh, to your well, embedded language. So how it went. Uh, so the upside of Lua is that it's fast. Uh, even today, there is no, as far as I know, the window manager is as fast as awesome with as many as um, ability and features that it offers. Uh, really, it's like it only has a few megabytes of uh, memory used, and you can do almost anything. So it's only a window manager. It's not like a full desktop, but for drawing a few title bars or system bars or whatever and moving window around, it's like most efficient things there is still today. Uh, it's very easy to learn Lua, so I was a bit scared that users were like abandoning Awesome because their the transition from a flat configuration file to a uh, language is like not something everybody enjoyed back then. But pretty soon, uh, they all started to realize that Lua was super easy to learn, that you were like, I mean, the documentation was good, so all you had to do was to spend a couple of hours reading the book that is online, and well, you will know the basics. And the uh, API we exposed from Awesome in Lua was pretty easy to use, so you, will, you would be able to do anything in maybe half a day, write your own window manager, because that's one of the perks of using uh, Lua or any embedding language that you can. Awesome has been designed not as a window manager in version 3, but as a framework to write your own window manager, because uh, like I said, I once a year, I was like everybody. You go to the list of window managers that exist and you try everything. And none of the window managers uh, usually uh, do everything you want. There's al always something, features, or something you would like to be different. Um, so my way of um, solving that was to say, okay, awesome, it's not going to be a window manager, it's going to be a framework to write your own window manager with a very small language. And Lua was very good at that. Uh, so learning curve was very, very easy. And the community is pretty good and, and was pretty good at the time. I think it's still pretty good today. Uh, there was a lot of things uh, we didn't have to do because we were, there were modules to do that. Uh, back then, there were not a lot of guide modules uh, I mean, to do uh, anything fancy. Uh, we wrote a few modules in Lua, and pretty soon the community, like, uh, catch up on us. Uh, we wrote a Pongo binding, uh, which is like uh, going to be a library to handle phones and Kero one too, to draw things on the screen. Uh, we wrote our own bindings, like something kind of quick and dirty. And we ended up like ditching it because uh, somebody wrote like a full introspective binding to it. So it was pretty cool to be part of a community where, well, you can do things, but the community is doing more than you are doing. So. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the downsides of Lua is that you actually misses a lot of features that you would like to see, like object systems or a lot of concept features. So I spend a lot of time writing things like an object system, which is very useful to use when you have a window manager because everything is seen as objects, uh, even to the user. So it's pretty easy to manipulate for end users. And I spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time writing uh, things around Lua to complete the language. And that's where I stopped working on Awesome because I was spending more time writing a programming language on top of Lua that's uh, Awesome itself. Um, the Lua downside that I found, I already wrote uh, a few, um, big blog post a few years ago about that. As uh, a stack-based C API is really not something I like uh, because to debug it, you have to you use, I mean, back then you had, you had to use your own tools. Uh, it was not supported by GDB or Valgrin or whatever. So tracking memory leaks on the Lua stack was like a nightmare. Uh, there is no parading, so there's no objects, ref counting, uh, etc. I mean, at least in Lua 5.0, 5, 5 5.1 we, we were using. Uh, and the community was small, but I think it really grew when we started to use it uh, with Awesome. So it was pretty cool. Um, to, um, to, to be in Lua community at that time. 
Uh, we don't use guard, but I still see a few upside to guard that maybe we would have been able to use, which is a um, multiple language support that has been has come with version two, I think. Uh, which at the time it really work. I don't know if it's if it works today on Lua. It doesn't. Okay, but it it was supposed to work uh, at some points. Uh, I would have loved personally to use Emacslib because I've did a lot of Emacslib uh, for the past years. Uh, gigs and things like things like that was pretty cool now uh, that didn't exist back then because while well, it was the, the old guy and uh, while well, it's a list and I really since since then uh, I switch my mind and I do prefer and I do like list a lot. I've been doing a lot of Emacs and I think I mean Emacs is kind of one of um, I think the model I realized I should have probably followed uh, doing Lua earlier. Uh, so the few lessons that we learned, I think it's not to embed. Like I said, uh, you'll see code size tends to decrease because you do more in your language. What embedding is a failure is like when you can't write from scratch in the language you want, like guide, uh, Lua, whatever. Uh, you have to write C, so you tend to think your program that way, but it's way better to say, okay, I'm going to do everything in Guile or Lua or whatever, and to write the bindings, something you usually don't want to do because you really want to solve your problem and not everyone else's problems, which is the part of the bindings. Um, when you pick a language, uh, you become part of the community with the good and the bad parts. Uh, luckily for us, the Lua community was pretty good, so it was a good write. And a lot of people ask me if, uh, I mean, and still asks if we could change Lua to something else, which is like not even possible nowadays. We have so much liners of, of code existing. Uh, and I absolutely don't regret it, even if I say a lot of bad things. I said a lot of bad things on Lua and what I dislike it, but I think it's pretty good for what we do in Awesome. Uh, it has its defects like any other programming language, I guess, but it's, it was really a good thing, and nobody really complained with good arguments about Lua itself. So it's really like, I think a good success um, using Lua in, in Awesome. Thanks. Any questions, guys? No questions. If you have time to want to write a new project like that so today, uh, you say that you should not embed a new language. So would it make sense to start it in Python? Directly? I think I would pick the language which has the most bindings to the library we use in Awesome, which is like uh, XCB for doing X. But I think, I mean, writing a window manager today where you have things like Wayland is like a weird idea, but... Uh, so yeah, I don't think there's binding for XCB or um, other library we use like uh, GBus, etc. Uh, in Lua, maybe in Lua and Guile there is, but not in every language out there. So it's, it's really the problem you want to solve, is it like, if you have to spend months and weeks first to uh, write your bindings, it's, it's a real problem. So are you really sure you want to do that first? So if, if it's not you don't want to do that, you have to pick a language where everything exists already, which can be Python because it has the largest community. Makes sense. Okay, time's up. <laughs> Thanks.